welcome to another video update about Ruby Rose 2. For those of you, just to put you in the frame, it is the 11th of October today, and essentially this is as real time as we can make the videos. I will get this into edit as soon as I can, and we hope to have it out to patrons who always are given uh, early access in a week's time, and then it goes out to general release in two weeks. If by any chance you want all the early stuff and lots of other bonuses, a quick plug for Patreon, it's all up there. Now, I'm gonna split this video into two parts. The first part is what's happening in Ho Chi Minh regarding the build, and the second part is gonna be about the development of the build and showing you the videos that Sea Wind have sent us. Just to bring you up to speed, yes, Ho Chi Minh in Vietnam has been in lockdown. The lockdown in various parts has been about four months long. However, the Sea Wind factory did not close down completely. The workforce was kind of like paired back to about 30 to 50%, but that means that they have continued to build our boats. Now, hull one is not ours. We are hull number two, and I will give you a full update in a few minutes about what's happening with our boat as well as hull one. So good news there. Another bit of good news is that prior to the lockdown, Seawind ordered all the parts that they don't make in-house for the boats. So things like engines and plotters and everything else have been ordered and delivered. And because they build things like they build their own masts, because they, they build their own cabinetry, nothing is outsourced. They even have like a, a, a workshop for building, uh, for making the soft furnishings and the cushions. It's all there ready to be built. So that's good news. Second piece of news is, well, what's happening, Nick? Are you and Therese going to Vietnam? Yes, we are. I had some really exciting news from the visa agent last week. My Vietnamese visa is all but approved. There are two parts to uh, acquiring a Vietnamese visa. First is approval from the People's Committee, which has been approved, and then it has to go to immigration to be stamped. The first part has been approved, and I've seen my name on a list, so I'm pretty happy about that. We propose to be entering Vietnam probably after Christmas, between Christmas and New Year, maybe early January, and then we will stay in Vietnam until the boat is complete. So we envisage having a completed boat March, April. We are Han number two. We will be doing sea trials on that, hopefully before then, but we'll also be kind of watching the end of the build of hull number one, which should be just after Christmas. You know, that will be kind of getting ready. So there's lots of things for us to film and show you. And so we're really excited about that. The second part of this video is, the, is just, I wanna talk you through everything that Sea Wind have sent us um, remotely um, from the factories. So there's lots of really exciting news about the decks and the deck and the hull. So let's, uh, let's have a good look at that. So a couple of things to notice from the 1370. Firstly, the chine. The chine is gonna give us internal volume while keeping the hull profile. Second thing, look at this fine reverse bow. She is gonna cut through the water. So this is a view of the hull. It is a port hull, and we can see first and foremost, the very large bow locker. Now we need one of these because we're gonna carry a lot of asymmetric sails. So let's throw some stats and dimensions at this locker. We have got a depth of 1.5 meters. Now that means you are going to have to step down into the locker and there is a glassed in step. The length of it is 2.1 meters. And so as far as we know, that is gonna be more than enough to carry our downwind sails. Moving aft, we have the walk-in wardrobe. Now, this is a pretty large area. The bulkhead that you can see aft is actually just a temporary bulkhead just for templating. But this is an area where, well, what was walk-in wardrobe used for? Mm, I think I'll have to defer to Teresa because I only own three t-shirts, but there you go. Moving on, we have the full carbon bulkhead. Now, as you can see, this is tabbed and glassed in place. On the port hand side, it forms the aft wall of the master cabin. There is then the large lock. Now, this normally will take a gen set if you are having a boat with a gen set. Why do you need a boat with a gen set? You don't with the 1370. And then moving forward and continuing to move to the starboard side, you have the guest cabin. Now, this is all in carbon fiber, this bulkhead, and you can see the tabbing and also things like the, 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 the reinforcement above the door frames to disperse load. So yeah, we're pretty excited by this. And then as the camera pulls forward again, you can see all those areas in black are full carbon fiber. 
And then finally, as we draw to the very aft section of the port bow, there is the area which is going to double as a berth, but also more excitingly from my point of view, it is going to be the workshop. Now we've talked extensively about the workshop and how we believe that these boats, any boat, any long term cruising blue water boat should have a workshop. This is no exception. So we're going to start with a large locker, whether this is a sail locker or a locker for other bits that you need for your boat to be decided. But there's a hatch there and then coming forward of that, this is the space where the workshop is going to be. Now you can see from previous renders that Seawind have produced, the workshop will have everything that I have asked for. So we have got a movable chair, we have got a vice, and this will all fold down to make a bed as well. So it's gonna be a fifth sea berth uh, in case anyone else needs to stay. One final development in the hull that I do want to show you, and this is the port side hull. Now, in this space, you can just see where the mini keels are, and they are sacrificial in case of collision. But this is where the fuel tanks are going to go, and this is important because the fuel tanks are going to be removable. Now, that means either if there's a problem with the fuel tanks, they need cleaning, or if you want to replace them with something else down the line, who knows? <music> So moving on, this is something that we are super excited about, and this is a world first. This is the plug for the deck of the 1370. Now, what we can see here, the aft port light. So we're stood on the starboard transom. So that is gonna be a port light. You can see little areas, and these are annotated by us. That is where the galley is going to be. You can then move on and see the saloon. Now, as you know, with Sea Winds, they make integrated furniture moldings so that the boat doesn't squeak and it remains light. But you can kind of see the whole size of this inboard, outboard area that you're gonna have. So back here, as with all the Sea Wind ranges, you are going to have a, a locker space here but this is also going to be seating there is going to be the cockpit table here and underneath this area is where the life raft the life raft does come aft out of the transom so again that's something we definitely had to have which was easy access to that life raft and deployed in 30 seconds swinging back round again as you can see you've got the seating area the trifold door is going to fold up into the uh into the hard top and so yeah we're going to have a really large area to kind of live in moving into the saloon or what the saloon is going to be you can see the area where the steps down into the master hull is going to be again you can see that under the under the saloon uh, settee these are going to be lockers now probably the four lockers will take the lithium batteries and so a lot of these are taken up but if this is based on the 1260 a lot of these lockers will be usable for storage this area as we swing around this is where the nav station is going to be so again a forward facing nav station there is going to be a dedicated nav chair there we're pretty excited about that as we've talked about extensively access down to the starboard hull which will be the guest hull and there will be uh, two and a half cabins down there so a big aft cabin a guest cabin and as we've discussed that extra berth the galley here this is going to be a full u-shaped galley and again you can see that that's going to kind of wrap around and there is provision for a breakfast bar as i said i still i find it incredible that there is a breakfast bar on a boat but let's move on looking at the deck primary winch position now the winches are going to be easily accessible if you can kind of envisage where the um where the helm seat's going to be that's fantastic reinforced stanchion beds again all the way down the deck something i do want to bring you to attention this area here this recess is where the lines are going to all be fed so the lines are all going to run under the decks there's going to be obviously a cover on this and all these little recesses show the position where hatches and lockers are going to be so nice flat flush hatches and a really nice locker space I think here you've got three lockers and this is very similar to the 1260 and there's also two further lockers in, 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 in midships. So you have a lot of locker space because you know, we're not going with a gen set, you know, we're just gonna have the anchor lock with the uh, anchor, with the chain in it or the chain locker rather. And see when I've got a really clever system for anchor deployment and retrieval. Just for your own kind of like locating, this is where the mast is going to be. The mast on the 1370 is further aft than on the 1260, so we could, there's quite a large foresail. So again, this partially removes the need for that kind of like that big genoa, just because of the size of the foresail. 
And again, as we move across to the port hand side, you can see the, uh, the hatch positions and also once again, that captive line position. So you can see that that runs at 45 degrees, follows the line of the, the, the port side windows down and there will be a cover on that so none of your lines are exposed because I know that a lot of you complain or talk about how you don't really want exposed lines. Again, if you look at the size of the deck, you will be able to see that you're going to have a huge amount of opening windows there. And again, for visibility, that's fantastic. But again, thinking about Therese and I and our ventilation, there is going to be a huge amount of ventilation. So we're kind of like really impressed to see the actual size. And don't forget, this is a 45 foot boat, but it looks absolutely huge. And again, really happy. So I really hope you enjoyed that. It's a little bit of an insight into the build of Ruby Rose 2. Again, I apologize that we are not in Vietnam, but we will be. Um, sea winds are gonna be sending lots more video files now that the factories are back open. So we will be able to bring you fairly regular updates about the build of Ruby Rose 2. We do also try and answer all your questions that are coming thick and fast. So if you have a question uh, that you want answered about Ruby Rose 2 build, just put it down there and we will really try to answer everything um, everything that you know everything that you ask if there are questions that kind of like are you know are being asked you know more repeatedly i will pin that comment so that you will get to see the answer below so check out below if to see if the question has that you wanted to ask has been answered already so yeah really exciting news lovely to see that deck it looks as if it's going to be a really sizable boat and the more parts that come together the more i can see how big this boat is going to be she's big and she looks fast those those hull profiles look pretty pointy to me so look i really hope you enjoyed that we will be bringing you lots more ruby rose 2 updates um, in the interim before we go to vietnam and obviously once we get to vietnam it's going to be an absolute free for all regarding what we're going to be able to show you so hope you enjoyed that give us a like give us a thumbs up as i said if you have a question just pop it down below and if you haven't already subscribed to the channel and you want to see like the boat build going on then please feel free to click that as well aside from that i wish you all the best for this fine october morning goodbye